everybody. Uh, happy Friday, happy 2022. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. If you are with us in the moment uh, or after the fact, uh, we appreciate your time and interest. My name is Josiah Gilliam, uh, and I've been working on the My Brother's Keeper Coordinator, uh, My Brother's Keeper Initiative uh, in the Office of the Mayor uh, for going on three years now. Uh, and uh, for a while now, we've been doing a series of broadcasts with the purpose of highlighting interesting opportunities for folks, uh, programs that are making a difference, community-based organizations that are impacting uh, folks' lives, especially in line uh, with the priorities of the mayor um, and in line with uh, partnerships that have emerged uh, over time. Uh, and today, I'm, I'm really excited uh, to kick off 2022 uh, with an amazing community organization, community partner highlight to really talk about some terrific work that's been happening, uh, to highlight some opportunities for folks to get involved, uh, and really just spend some time in community uh, together today. Uh, we're gonna be talking with Year Up, uh, and you're gonna hear all about it. We'll start with uh, some, some high-level definitions. We'll talk about how it's structured here in Pittsburgh um, and get into the nitty-gritty. Um, but I've got an amazing uh, group of, of people here uh, to introduce you to, so I'm gonna start with a round of introductions, uh, and then we're gonna jump uh, right in. Um, okay, my friends, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, great to be with you uh, here on the Zoom. Uh, if you would, just introduce yourself however you would like, uh, how you're coming to this conversation uh, today, uh, and we'll start with Ms. Lisa. Great. Thank you so much, Josiah. My name is Lisa Dias. I'm the Site Director for Europe Pittsburgh. We're so glad to be here with you today and to be able to share a little bit about what we do. Um, We've been here in Pittsburgh for about a year and um, in partnership with Be and My Melon. And it's been a fantastic run so far. We're so proud of our students and what they've done in this last year. Um, and I can't wait to get into a conversation about, um, about our program and in particular about our young adults and what they're doing. And with that, I'll pass it over to my colleague, Anita. Thank you, Lisa. Anita. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Josiah. So my name is Anita White and I serve as the Associate Director of Enrollment for the year up uh, Pittsburgh market. We'll pass it on to Sam. Hello everyone, my name is Savion Williamson. I am a graduate of the inaugural class for year up Pittsburgh and I am currently interning with BNY Mellon. Terrific, uh, thank you all so much for being here. Okay, Ms. Lisa, I'm gonna turn to you first. Um, what is year up? You know, uh, what is this organization? Uh, how do you describe it in the work that you do? And how would you describe it to say a, a mentee in high school that might be interested in learning more? Sure, so Gear Up is an organization that helps young adults launch their career in IT and business operations. Um, we work with students over the course of a year. It is their year up. And the first six months of that is spent in learning and development. So they come to us and we spend six months digging into hard skills, soft skills, thinking about all the things that make someone successful in a corporate environment. Um, our students come to us straight out of high school. They come to us with some community college experience, some college experience, and we really try to meet everybody where they are and then support them to really challenge themselves and bring their best self to the, or to the organization. So, Every student that um, com successfully completes the, it's a, and it's a rigorous program too. So every student that successfully completes their learning and development phase is guaranteed an internship, a six month internship. And here in Pittsburgh, we are very fortunate to partner with BNY Mellon and all of our students that, are, that successfully complete um, the learning and development phase go on to a six month internship at the bank. Um, during that internship, they are doing the things that interns do. They are learning, they're building their skills, they're building their network. We also stay very close to them during that, um, during that time frame to provide them the support that they need to really um, to be successful and to make the most of the and make the most of the opportunity. And of course, what we hope happens at the end of that six month internship is that they um, are offered a full-time or contract position, um, with the bank or with one of with another partner or um, firm here in the city. Terrific. So it's it starts with training, six months, um, and then you're guaranteed an internship, which is more on the job training. Uh, another paid experience for the young people that are participating. Is that correct? Exactly. And I do want to um, note too that the program is at no cost to students. So during the first six months, they receive an educational stipend. Um, 
if it were Lisa up, Lisa's year up, it would be, maybe we would pay a little bit more, but you know, we will, we will get to that. We're going to get there. Um, and then when they go off to their internship, they uh, receive minimum wage for their hours worked. Understood. Uh, and so Europe's a national organization. Uh, you have um, operations around the nation? We do. So we are in 27 cities. We have 35 campuses. We are on the West Coast in Seattle. We're in the San Francisco Bay Area, Los Angeles. We're in Chicago, Texas, and up and down the East Coast. We um, our home, Our headquarters are in Boston. And then we also have um, locations in Rhode Island, also in Pennsylvania, we're in Philadelphia, we're in New York, New Jersey, um, the DC area, we have a presence in Atlanta and Florida. It's wonderful. So can you give us a sense of how Year Up really came, you know, came to be? Uh, it seems like um, it's notable in a number of ways, but it, it works directly with employers that might not otherwise have a sense of how they want to introduce their company to young talent or how they want to approach um, like job training um, at that level. How, how does Europe kind of fit into that and, and how did it get going? Sure. So we have a really great origin story. So our founder, Gerald Stratavian, was um, a part of the Big Brother, Big Sister program in New York. And he was had a little brother named David. And what he really saw through that experience is that talent, of course, is spread evenly across our society, but opportunity is not. And what he really saw in his little brother was that he he didn't need, he didn't lack for want of talent. He lacked for want of access to opportunity. And he really got him thinking, um, how do we, how do we connect more young people, more young adults to opportunity? How do we make sure that they get whatever training they need to enhance their, their own, their own talents, that the, the abilities that they bring to the program? And how do we make sure that we connect them to the opportunities that are there waiting for them? Um, one of the things I think is unique about Europe is we really think about the markets that we're in. We want to make sure that we are teaching young adults relevant job skills that we're thinking about when we go into an area, we're thinking about what are the, you know, what's the demand, um, what job skills, what training can we provide young adults that is really going to make them um, viable in this work, in this, in this market. So you'll see across the Europe network, we really look at what each market needs. So the training that students receive here in Pittsburgh might be a little bit different than what they're getting in the Bay Area because the demands of the market are, um, are different. I think that um, also unique to us is how we approach the work. So we think about hard and soft skills and we really um, want to make sure that young adults are prepared not only with you know, companies are going to, every company is going to approach their work in a unique way, right? We want to give them the foundations where they can adapt in any environment, enough technical skills where they can adapt. They understand the, the, the foundational sort of sort of uh, piece there. Um, but then they also have the skills to into these environments where maybe they haven't, they haven't been before. Um, we also think about, I think, one thing that I really appreciate about Europe is we are trying to change the narrative about what talent looks like. Um, you know, who, who are you looking at when you think about young talent in the market? And we want to make sure that they are looking at the young adults that we work with. Um, one of my favorite things that I've heard, you know, in our Europe network is that we are not a charity. We are an outlet for really good talent. Um, you're not doing us any favors. You're not doing our young people favors. They're bringing the talent to you. Right. Um, and we, and I just love that. And when you get a chance, I can't wait. I'm so excited that um, Savion's here um, <laughs> and you'll have a chance to talk to him because our young people are phenomenal. They're talented. And again, they just need that opportunity. I appreciate that. So you mentioned that you, you try to take on uh, the, the local context to kind of fit into what a city and a region is mm -hmm. focused on. Um, you know, workforce development, job training, talent, attraction, retention, but also sourcing development and growth are huge topics of conversation uh, here in the region at, and in Pittsburgh. And we have mm -hmm. a really incredible opportunity, I think, not just to talk about how we're better, you know, say, marketing uh, Pittsburgh and the region to, say, college students that are coming here from around the world, but reaching into community to engage with talent that's already here to your point around talent being equally distributed but opportunity not how can we you know extend and expand opportunity with practical pathways that allow folks to kind of get going uh, and then and then make their moves um, how has year up kind of zeroed in uh, here you mentioned you have a partnership with BNY Mellon enormous employer uh, you know a terrific community a partner in so many ways mm -hmm. how has that gone when as you're stepping into the gap of all these societal and regional trends 
That's a big question. Um, so number one, I am, I just can't say enough, like how grateful we are and how appreciative we are of our partnership with, with, um, with BNY Mellon. And I'm actually going to turn to my colleague, Anita, to talk a little bit about the relationships with some of our community partners, because I think that, you know, Europe is fantastic. I love working for Europe. I love our mission and we cannot do this alone. There's so much need out there. There's so much opportunity. There's so much talent out there. Um, and I think that our approach is really thinking about how do we become a part of the fabric? And I think Anita has done, and her team has, have done just really tremendous work looking at the community and talking to our partners and figuring out like, how do we fit in? What are the needs? So I'm gonna, yeah, that would I'm be perfect. Yeah, Anita, could you start with just describing your role um, and, and briefly like your history with, with Europe here locally and then and then to Lisa's point, yeah, how's it gone and, and what do the community partnerships look like? Of course, um, so again, I am the Associate Director of Enrollment uh, for our site. So what that means is I oversee our recruitment strategy um, and ex the execution of that recruitment strategy. And um, here in Pittsburgh, it's been very unique. Um, we we're originally supposed to launch in March of 2020, um, and then the pandemic happened. So um, that really put a halt in a lot of the activities that we would deem traditional um, for, you know, making a name within the community, um, you know, developing partnerships, reaching into the community to find the young adults um, to join this program, where you know those traditional outlets were not available to us or accessible to us because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, but Pittsburgh is very welcoming. Um, I can say so many fabulous, wonderful things about um, the residents and the community here in Pittsburgh. Um, one of the, the greatest things that um, I've taken away from this experience um, with working with this organization and other organizations in Pittsburgh is that residents really do care about the community. They care about what is happening with the young adults, um, the economy and et cetera. And so um, one of the first things that we, we did when we um, had to pause our launch and figure out, you know, how are we gonna continue to serve this market during this pandemic? Um, we started building our relationships with different community partners. My Brother's Keeper being one of them. Um, we connected with CCAC, um, JFCS, the URA, just to name a few. Literacy Pittsburgh, um, and we just really started, um, you know, reaching out with curiosity, getting to know um, who are the different community partners that can help support um, our efforts and get our information out there. Um, and so, through this process of you know overseeing recruitment, finding young adults, um, navigating through the pandemic, we were able to successfully launch our very first cohort of students in March of 2020 or 2021. So we enrolled a class of students um, that was 34 young adults who started with us. Um, and we are now moving into our third class. Um, and so we're really excited about that progress. Um, we have a graduation for our uh, first group of students next week. And so to see how far we've come, um, despite the challenges that we face, you know, arriving in a brand new city, um, navigating through the pandemic, and recruiting young adults for this program that they have no idea who we are and what we do. Um, it's, we're just very grateful to be in this position right now. Yeah, so I was at, I was fortunate to be invited to the kind of kickoff uh, ceremony pre-COVID, seems like a long time ago. In a lot of ways, it was a long time ago. Um, and so you had an idea of how this program was going to go. And to your point, the state of the world changed in a number of ways due to COVID. What has the, what was your approach with getting the word out there? You mentioned these community-based partners, Urban Redevelopment Authority, JFCS, uh, My Brother's Keeper. You know, these are great signal boosting entities, uh, but you have to be innovative to, to reach people. And we're all kind of going virtual and remote mode and all of this, so it can be even more tough. How did you go about it? Um, innovative is definitely the word. We had multiple avenues of recruitment strategy. Um, our team likes to consider ourselves scrappy. We leave no stone unturned. And it's really because we believe in this mission. We believe in what we're doing. And every day, we truly do come to work and remind ourselves we're here to serve the young adults in Pittsburgh. And every young adult counts. And so that really fueled our efforts. Um, to really dig deep 
and find new ways to reach people. Um, we have done activities such as what we call boots on ground. Um, Lisa, myself, our colleagues during the pandemic, six feet apart, masks on, we were you know, walking the streets um, in Pittsburgh. We were walking through downtown um, Lawrenceville, all the communities surrounding Pittsburgh, handing out flyers, handing out brochures, talking to community residents, asking if we can hang flyers anywhere we could. Um, we we have worked with um, some other apartment complexes and have allowed for mailings to be sent to um, homes and the residents in the city of Pittsburgh. We have posted on social media. We have, um, gosh, done. I mean, we literally. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Anita, we literally walked around with like tape and flyers. And I yeah. actually, Samuel, I think that's how you, and City of Pittsburgh, I'm so sorry if we weren't supposed to put up any of those flyers somewhere. So, oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, but I think that that is actually, Semyon, how um, you found us, right? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Yeah, so Savion, tell us about that, uh, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, you're, you, you found out about Year Up and de decided to, you know, to go for it. Uh, walk us through that. How did you first hear about it? What about uh, how you found out intrigued you? And, and how did the process go with you getting involved? So I had been working at Target overnight for a good six to seven years and realized that a year into the pandemic, my life hadn't really changed. Mm -hmm. And that was when one night I actually managed to find a flyer for Year Up right next to the bus stop. I gave it a look over and looking at the flyer, seeing this is like too good of an opportunity to pass up, I decided to go ahead and take a chance with it because I'd realized that I had been, nothing in my life had really changed due to the pandemic. And I'd also been relying on my grandmother too much. And I felt that this would be the best time to become like more independent and actually achieve some life goals that I had. So that, what, what about it specifically kind of caught your attention? Was it this idea of, of practical training? Was it this idea of you would get uh, likely to get a job? Like, what was it about it that, uh, that kind of piqued your interest? A combination of mainly focusing on the technical skills, skills, which is one of the main things that I had always been interested, like going into high school and then college, but also actually reading about the stipend. Like seeing that, I was like, wait, you're paying me to actually learn these skills. Yeah. I was like, this looks like too good to be true, but I realized that I really didn't have anything to lose. So I decided to go for it. Wonderful. So, so how's it gone? You know, what's the experience been like? Um, COVID's changed a whole lot. So you had to, to kind of, uh, you know, go, go with the flow as well, but tell folks, you know, for someone that might be interested in what has the experience actually been like for someone in the program? How do you describe it? I personally describe it as a Intensive yet accommodating because not only are you learning technical skills and professional skills, but life skills that you probably wouldn't find anywhere else. And I know I personally had to make a few changes along the way, like getting a good proper work life balance because I, I'm still working target on the side alongside both L&D and during my internship and also having to buy you know, some new clothes, make sure I'm dressed professionally. But everything else I had to do with the program, uh, the staff and the learning experience has also been very accommodating to me. As far as like, say, the scariest part of the program for me outside of like the public speaking course was probably that initial like sign up and intern interview, making sure I was actually trying to get in. So what are, what are the next steps look like for you? You know, you've started to have this this training, some of these technical skills, some life skills, as you've mentioned, uh, public speaking even. And here you are doing a public facing broadcast uh, uh, with a bunch of other adults. That's kind of cool. Um, what's next in your journey? What do you see for yourself um, coming up? Um, looking forward, I'm just still looking for new opportunities to build my skill set and network and grow my personal brand as well as a person. Like uh, considering my internship would be in my melon, I'm actually being advanced to an apprenticeship so that I can continue to learn more with uh, BNY Mellon as well as my managers and the people there that have helped me along the way. That's terrific. So you started with on the ground, on the job, technical skills training, uh, phased into an internship, uh, and now you're moving into an apprenticeship. Uh, to kind of deepen that training and, and learn more? Yes, I am. That's really extraordinary. And Lisa and Anita, you know, talk to us about, talk to us about that. You know, BNY Mellon is not a uh, tiny nonprofit uh, or a small business. Um, this seems like a pretty um, engaged level of, um, of training um, and of care, quite frankly, of, of, of making sure that it's a meaningful experience for Savion. Talk to us a little bit about that. I can't say enough um, about our partnership. They have been wonderful, accommodating, and I think 
you know, in addition to them having access to our young adults, which I think is a, is a win, right, for them as for, for them as well. Um, there's just been a lot of personal buy-in from the folks that we work with. They really want to see our young adults achieve. Um, achieve. They want to see them advance. Um, the managers that we work with individually um, are just fantastic, and they put a lot of care into the training plans that they're creating for um, for interns. Um, they they're open to feedback. They provide us feedback. They're providing their interns with um, with feedback. It's a really good um, yeah. It's a really good relationship all around. You know, we spend so much time talking about um, just in the space. You know, learning and career pathways. But this seems to be an example where they're really coming alongside this this new talent in the system and walking them through. Uh, you know, upskilling and getting involved with the with the broader corporation and different business tracks and stuff like that. Is that fair to say? I think so. Yeah. Yes. I don't know, Savion, would you is that uh, would you say that that's been reflective of your experience? Yeah, like through all the different like trials and tribulations of both L and D and internship, everyone from the staff of Europe to the manager to BMW Mellon have been very helpful in helping us learn new skills as well as making sure that we're uh, able to properly accommodate to the uh, business side of both Europe and BNY Mellon. Extraordinary. Uh, okay, Ms. Edith, let's, um, let's talk. Yeah, go ahead. Do you have something you wanted to add? Just really quickly. So um, just speaking about the overall experience as a staff member here, um, one of the things that I truly love is that every staff member at Europe is a part of what we call our learning community. And so each class of students at each site that's unique to the market has a learning community and we all partner up and pair up as coaches and mentors for the young adults that we serve. And so we work with them one-on-one -on -one, and we also work with them on a week to week basis in group coaching. And it's really a space for the young adult to have another trusted adult who has walked through you know, this professional space and can help them navigate um, the different challenges that they may face in the corporate setting and a professional environment. Um, and I'm really looking forward to continuing to provide that coaching and that mentorship. And from what I heard, you know, I've, I've been here for two years now, but for um, folks at Year Up who have had a longer tenure than I have, say that they still connect with their coaches um, years later. You know, they are still professional resources. Um, to our coaches and vice versa. And so it really is like a big family, um, but also a very large supportive network um, nationwide. And you, you all have trained social workers that help you with this, correct? Like it's not just, you know, uh, just random adults milling about. These are trained professionals that are, that are coming alongside, you know, the young people as they're moving through this process, yeah? Absolutely. We have a student support um, function within our with our organization. So on site, we have a we have a licensed social worker who works with students individually. They can opt into you know working with her like for whatever you know with, with whatever they need. In addition to like to the general coaching that they get from you know any of us any of us on staff, just sort of general professional coaching um, nationwide. We also have you know the student services is like a large functional role. So they have lots of resources available to them um, for ongoing training, for resources um, and support. Yeah, so I'm hearing learning communities, program managers, you have coaches, you have instructors, mentors, student services in broad terms. Yeah, just a really comprehensive kind of holistic family style approach almost to, uh, to training, yeah? It is. You know, one thing I would also mention too, when we think about, so we think about Europe being in three phases. So the first phase is that learning and development. The second phase is internship, but the third and what we, in the longest phase is the alumni phase. So mm -hmm. we have 30,000 plus graduates to date. And Europe is a 21 year old organization. So some of those early graduates are in a position where they're hiring people. Um, you know, they are, opening doors. And one thing I will say is that the Europe community really, I think, looks out for one another. Um, you know, when you look, as you start to, you know, get deeper into the Europe community on LinkedIn, um, when people have job openings, they are sharing them. Like if you reach out to any Europe graduate as a, you know, as a fellow alum, um, they're going to help you in any way possible open the door. And I think that that really holds up across the network. I think that that is one of the, um, 
I think one of the strongest things that we can offer our alumni is being a part of that group. So, you know, Savion, if you want to move to Charlotte, you've got a community. You want to move to New York, you've got a community. You know, wherever you go, there are Europe, um, there are Europe graduates and alums who work in these like big corporations who are looking, they know what Europe um, graduates bring and the work ethic, what um, they also know that Europe folks generally want to open the door for others. And that's mm-hmm. something that I think that people really want to cultivate in their, um, in their organizations. Yeah, that social capital is super important. We talk about that a lot with, you know, with young people. This is a really practical way to understand that. Um, okay, so Anita, I'd like to talk with you, you know, how do folks get in? You know, what does the application, you know, kind of process looks like, look like rather, uh, what is the investment? Uh, what's the value proposition, right? You're, what, what's the pitch uh, to people and then what's the process? When we're thinking about the value proposition, um, looking at the young adults that we serve and the need that we have, the market need and the demand that we have here in Pittsburgh, we know that there are young adults um, that are in our serving range, which is 18 to 30. Um, who are lacking access to opportunity. Oftentimes we hear young adults um, through the admissions process say, you know, I don't think I can commit a full 12 months. Um, I've got to work or I have X, Y, and Z going on in my life right now. I'm not sure if this is the right time. And um, what we tend to do in admissions and in our enrollment team is talk with young adults through that experience. We're not trying to sell the program or push it on anyone because we're here for equity and justice for our young adults. And we're not going to put a young adult into a situation where we know that they're not going to be successful based off of the information that they've shared with us about their circumstances. Um, But for those who would be a good fit, um, we'd love to just remind them that one year of your life might seem really long when you're staring down that journey. But Um, I'm sure Savion might be able to speak to this. When you finish, the investment was very much worth your time um, and your energy and your resources because now instead of going to a job where you're clocking in and clocking out, you know, there's maybe some growth um, in a job per se. Um, Now a young adult can say that they have launched their career. And we know that the difference between a job and a career is that a career is growth over time. Um, and you, you stumble into things that you don't even realize that you enjoyed. I love to share the example about myself. Um, my, I never thought that I would be into data and understanding data. Um, I, you know, growing up, loved reading and writing, and I thought I wanted to be an English teacher. And my career, just because of the opportunities that I was afforded and I took advantage of, led me into reading and understanding and analyzing data. I didn't even know what data was when I started working professionally at, at 10 years ago. And so that's the beauty of having a career. And um, our young adults are walking away with experience, opportunity, apprenticeships, jobs. We're helping them get into college. And so your life will be different. It will be transformed from how it was when you started and how it is when you end. And it, um, the opportunity really, um, is one that you, a young adult really should truly consider um, given all the support that we provide. So I'll move quickly, not quickly, but I'll move into the admissions process, um, which is another part of the role that I have here um, in overseeing that experience for the young adults um, who are interested in applying. So we do have an admissions process that really holds a young adult or a young person accountable. Um, through the experience, because that's what we're looking for. We're looking to build them up and help mold them into a professional from day one. And so um, a young adult can submit an application online. We do have an interview that um, they'll be required to sign up for. And the interview, we try to keep it welcoming and we like to term it as a success conversation. Um, Mm -hmm. We wanna know more about the young person and why they're interested in the program. And we want them to be able to feel comfortable and confident to ask us questions one-on-one um, that really might matter to them. Um, you know, for example, what are the hours like? Um, what's the time commitment after the program? So we get that, ex- we get that in- engaging dialogue in the interview process. Um, if a young adult is accepted into the program, they'll accept their offer and then they'll go through a series of onboarding activities with us um, to make sure that they're ready to enroll whenever our program begins. 
Okay. Um, and so where are we in the process right now? So Savion's uh, going to graduate uh, here soon. Uh, you are able to get another class going during COVID, which is an extraordinary you know, achievement given all the circumstances. Where are we at now and what the folks, folks need to know? Thank you. So right now we are actually recruiting um, and accepting applications for our March cohort. Um, we have a rolling admissions process. And so what that means for anyone who's joining us and listening, um, that we en enroll a group of students every March and every September. And so um, you can always apply at any time of the year. And depending on what time of the year it is or whatever circumstances they have in their life, we'll decide if the March cohort or the fall or the September cohort is the best option. Um, so right now we got about six weeks until we start our next cohort. We do have seats available. Um, and to apply, you just go to our website, www.yearup.org. Um, and I definitely encourage a young person to, you know, toggle around our website, read our uh, frequently asked questions, check out the videos online. Um, and to apply, they just need to hit the yellow button at the top of the page. Um, and one of our admissions reps will be in touch with them, usually within 24 hours to talk with them about their interests and get them moving along in the process. Great. And I imagine they'll be able to find the answer uh, to this question uh, on there as well. Um, but what are the eligibility requirements? You mentioned an age range. Is there anything else that uh, folks should know? Yes, thank you. So um, the eligibility requirements are pretty broad. Um, at least we believe that them to be. So ages 18 to 30 um, are the age ranges that we serve. Um, you need to be within commuting distance to downtown Pittsburgh. Reason for that is because we're hoping that you get um, converted into a full-time job at BNY Mellon. And so essentially this is where you would be showing up every day for work. And so you need to be living, you know, within a reasonable distance so that you can get to and from Pittsburgh. Though our program is hybrid um, and partially virtual as well because of the pandemic. Um, and then you need to have a high school diploma or a GED. And sometimes okay. we hear young adults say, I don't have either. Um, and we have so many wonderful partners we're actually able to get them connected to resources within the community, um, like the Garfield Jubilee Association, for example, or JFCS, where they can earn their, their GED um, on, on an accelerated pace so that they can apply. Um, and then finally be uh, available during our program hours, which are essentially Monday through Friday from nine until five um, for the full duration of the year. Okay, got it. Uh, so folks can go to yearup.org uh, to fill out an application, uh, find more information, uh, and then once you submit the form, someone from the team will be in touch to get that process started, get that conversation going to see if this is a good fit, and to work through whatever other services or kind of path smoothing needs to happen uh, to figure it out, correct? That's correct. Okay, great. I kind of want to zoom out a little bit again because I'm wondering, um, you have such a successful thing going, you know, right now. What would you say to the broader community about what's working here? And maybe this is a Lisa question as well. You know, other other corporations who are trying to figure out. I've been in meetings where uh, a company's been trying to figure out: um, should we start an internship program? You know, what are what are some ways that we can develop a pipeline of young talent? What are some some non traditional ways of thinking about it? You know, what what kind of counsel would you give? to an organization that's trying to think about that, to think about talent in those ways? And, and what do you think Year Up kind of brings to that answer? I think that um, one, I would encourage any, any local organization that is interested in really redefining how they think about talent and how they bring it into their corporate, into their, into their firms to, to contact us and have a, have a conversation. I think that one of the things that is really great about Year Up is that I think we take a lot of the risk out of it. So we, you have a partner, right? You're like, okay, I know that this is something that I wanna do, but how do I go about it? Well, we are here to partner with you to help you make those steps and think about like, what does that mean? Like what changes do I need to make? Or, um, you know, when we think about the culture that, that young adults are coming into, like we can help you like think about those things and, um, really make your culture culture work too for like young for young talent um and we also are a partner when we place a you know an intern at an organization we don't just plop them there and leave them right they mm -hmm. have an ongoing you know an ongoing support system so i think that that is also something that is really fantastic um about you know about organizations like you about like europe um is that 
we don't leave you to kind of go it alone, right? Um, and I think too, like we can also, we have a lot of evidence in terms of like that this is successful, right? I think that that is another thing that is, that's great um, about, especially where we are now, like coming into a new market, we are not trying to prove ourselves in terms of like, hey, does this, does this program work? Like we can show you, we have 20 years of evidence that we can go back. We have, you know, you know tens of thousands of graduates who, um, successful graduates. And, you know, our, our, our numbers bear out too. Like Anita was talking about the data. I mean, we have, you know, close to like, you know, 80 plus percent of our graduates that are successful. And we define success as being fully employed, um, being employed full-time or in enrolled in full, full-time higher education at, um, within four months of graduation from Europe. So, you know, our students are really hitting the mark and they're going out there and they're making differences. Um, I love to hear what our, like we've had um, alumni who are running for um, local office. We have alumni who are in hiring positions I love it when alumni come back and work at Europe because they want to be a part of the change that, you know, that is happening. So, um, yeah, hopefully that, that, that answers the question. Yeah. And I'll certainly affirm, um, the, the encouragement to reach out and have a, a conversation about it, uh, especially because, um, there are kind of templates you, you can consider, one could consider, uh, but also to your point, Lisa, the data you know, really bears this out. I was in a meeting and this organization was talking about how uh, they had started an internship program. Um, and after several years and, ca and gathering data, they, they discovered that folks that had that introductory experience with their organization were staying longer than the average churn of new hires, uh, and they were more likely to be rated high or exemplary on, the, on their performance reviews. And they were astonished by this, excited about it, and wanting to double down and figure out how they could work to reach uh, younger folks even earlier uh, in their development and in high school and things like that to introduce their organization and to put kind of a structure you know around that and, and year up is it's almost like to me it seems like an, an extension um, with practical supports a model that's worked in other places um, that works directly with an organization to really figure it out and you kind of model it on both sides right like the wraparound supports that you provide to the students uh, to the participants in the Europe family uh, are kind of mirrored with how you work with the corporation too so that the needs are being met and that it's a ongoing over time relationship is that is that fair to say absolutely absolutely and I think that you know we have just long-standing partnerships nationwide, um, you know, and I think that we really, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn to Europe, but I think that we really want to influence how employers look at talent. Um, we want to work with what we call employers of influence. Um, we work with, you know, huge corporations across the, across the country to really challenge them to say like, how do we hire talent? You know, what, what does this talent look like? And those employers are influential in what happens and how folks hire, you know, across, across the country. I would also say that um, some of our data shows that our interns also tend to stay longer. So, you know, I think that, you know, everybody's in a talent, you know, crunch right now. And mm -hmm. Europe interns tend to stay at their, especially when they get converted, tend to stay at their internship partner longer than the average employer. So if you think about the investment that you're making, um, it's a pretty good one. You know, if you're having somebody, you know, that's a typical employee, maybe that's staying two, three years, and then you have another, like your Europe intern um, who's staying like three to six, I mean, that's a big, that's a big difference in terms of like, you know, that skill that that institutional knowledge that they're that they are keeping within your that and the investment that you've made stays. I mean, it's it's uh, critically important to this to this region and city, as you all you know well know. And just for folks that aren't you know aren't familiar, um, we have a number of, of factors kind of at play at once. We have um, an aged workforce that's kind of uh, that's retiring, uh, coming to that season you know of life. Um, we we have about we graduate about forty thousand seniors uh, through our regional universities, uh, but about half of them leave every year, mainly because they're getting. Uh, well, I don't want to paint with a broad brush, but. A lot of it's because they're getting a great degree at a Carnegie Mellon or a Pitt, and they're uh, getting good uh, job offers other places, et cetera. Um, and, and so we have, we have like a gap you know, to fill. And so a part of that conversation is, okay, so if we're attracting talent to the region, how do we more effectively market and plug folks in so that they stay? The other part of that, and this is really where I think a lot of the equity and the justice considerations that you were talking about, Anita, come into play, is what about folks that are, that are here? What about the pathways to opportunity uh, right here? And how can we be uh, innovative and intentional um, 
in the approach in terms of outreach, but then what are the experiences at the end of the day? You know, what actually is entailed? How on the job is it? How practical is it to a, to a corporation system? Uh, how does it turn into conversions, right? How does it actually lead to a job so that you can have that job to career phase? Uh, and so I really hope people take uh, some time to take a look at, uh, at Europe, uh, and to familiarize themselves uh, with that space, because if you want to talk about equity and justice, uh, it's, it's, it, uh, there's a lot of ways to get involved in that conversation. This is a really, really important one. You're talking about uh, the improved lived experience for people that participate in it. I see you're enthusiastically nodding. Something you'd like to add there? I just love it. Um, I love how we are boosting the economy here in Pittsburgh. Um, we do hear a lot of young adults say, when I graduate, I'm moving to Atlanta, Georgia, or I'm moving this way, I'm moving that way, I wanna get out of here. Yeah. Um, but Pittsburgh has so many opportunities. Mm -hmm. Why not come and stay here, rebuild your city, make it livable, um, make it equitable, make it a, a, a livable city for all. And so I love that I get to work for an organization that gets to be a part of these conversations um, that really do challenge the status quo um, you know, our young adults don't need a high school diploma, I mean, don't need a college degree to get into an entry level position when they come through year up. Going through year up is enough. And so for us to be able to challenge employers to say, why is it that we need a, a college degree for this person to do X, Y, and Z entry level? And year up is proving that that's not the case anymore. Um, and there are alternative options, or I don't even want to call it alternative options. There are just options. College is not the only first avenue that a young person can go through. And if maybe we see a lot of young adults in our program who have tried college, it was too expensive, or they couldn't thrive in the environment because there wasn't enough support. You know, we're talking about young adults who you know, are first generation college students or high school graduates, right? And so our program, you know, we're supporting the young adults, we're putting them into the economy, giving them, getting them access to jobs, but as Savion mentioned, there's a huge component of personal development, conflict mm. resolution, public speaking, being able to have interpersonal awareness and persistence and striving to learn. And, you know, all of these things are factored into the program. It's not we're just taking them, training them, getting them a job. We're providing them a community. We're providing them with the development that they need to thrive when they do get that job to understand a personal work-life balance and I'm just excited to be a part of this conversation um, and moving the needle forward here in Pittsburgh. Absolutely. Lisa, something you wanted to add? No, I'm just agreeing with you know, with uh, what Anita has to say. Like, I get excited. I get excited, too. But, yeah, you know, it's, it's great. Yes, absolutely agree with what she with what she's sharing. It's it's very exciting. I, sh I share that. Um, and I'm very grateful to have you all in the region, in the city, uh, you know, working on it. You know, so many of these conversations stay at a at a 50,000 foot you know level. Uh, and when you and you, you know this as well, when you're working with these huge corporations or companies, I mean, it makes sense to start, you know, at that level. Uh, I love uh, conversations like this and programs like Europe, organizations like Europe, because we can get very micro, uh, you know, as well. Uh, and, and all of this regional conversation, you know, ultimately in some ways, you know, almost even archetypically, you want to say, it's that Savion's life gets better. You know, yeah, that over absolutely. time there's additional opportunity uh, for him um, and that um, even the training experience itself is beneficial, that kind of thing. Um, all right, my friends, so we've, we've talked about, um, you know, high level stuff. We've kind of zoomed in. I think it makes sense to bring this conversation uh, to, a bit of a, to a bit of a close. I have a, a final round of questions uh, for you and then, and then we'll get out of here and, and back to our uh, Friday. Uh, Savion, I'd like to start with you. Um, before I get to my final question, anything else that's on your mind and heart to share about Europe or the experience, anything you'd want to make sure that you mention uh, before we get out of here? Just that I'm thankful to the staff and for the programs that just existing at all, that I've been able to learn so much, not just technically, but also about myself and how I've been able to try and improve myself as a person. So I want to thank Anita, Lisa, Ted, Laura, and even people that aren't in the program anymore, like Travis and Walter. I just want to thank them so much for the opportunity that helped me grow. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so Savion, um, why should a young person consider taking a look at, at Europe? Um, you know, think about your former self. You know, maybe you have a job and you want to make some other moves. Maybe you're just generally interested. You know, make the pitch. Why should they? Why should I, they give it a look? I would say. 
<laughs> I would definitely say it's not just because of the skills that you learn, but something that Anita touched on that's basically been like a massive thing throughout the entire conversation that Europe is basically part of a community and that once you're in Europe, you're basically in Europe for life and that you'll always be able to rely on both the team members and basically anyone within that community for the rest of your life. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you, Savion. Uh, Ms. Lisa, anything else you'd like to, to mention? Um, and if there's, what, what's something you'd like folks to, to walk away with this conversation understanding? Um, one, that our young adults are incredible. Savion is a cybersecurity professional and you better get hip and hire him and hire his, his you know, the folks, his peers in, in the cohort. Like they, they have skills and they're, they're the folks you need to hire for, you know, to, to help you reach your goals, like as a, as a company. Um, and I just hope that, you know, young adults out there will, will give us a shot. Um, I think that, you know, speak, I'm going to speak for Anita here that I think any of us are open to conversations that they have questions, they can always reach out um, to, to talk to us about um, what the program has to offer. Thank you, Ms. Lisa. Uh, Anita, same question to you. Anything else you'd like to make sure you mention? Uh, and what should folks walk away from? Walk um, away, yeah, walk away uh, with. Okay. Um, given that one of my major priorities in my role here is to recruit young adults, um, I'm encouraging you to apply. And as Lisa said, um, anyone is welcome to contact us. Our contact information is located on our website. We are a small but mighty team. Um, and we are very interested in connecting and, and talking with um, anybody who wants to be a part of this movement. Um, so please go to our website, apply. Um, and if you, whoever is listening, um, might not be a good fit for you or someone that, you know, you might know in your office or at work, but think about any young adults that are in, in your life or in your community, um, young adults that, are, that you might know through church, um, uh, anything, please share the information um, because that has been one of the biggest, um, biggest challenges and opportunities that we've had uh, here in Pittsburgh is getting the word out. So people know that we're here. So share, share, share. Terrific, so yearop.org, uh, and then you can see social media and stuff there. You can reach out to get more questions answered. Um, there's so yeah, we a, are on Facebook and Instagram as well. Uh, just search for Year Up Pittsburgh. Year Up Pittsburgh on Facebook and Instagram. Terrific. Uh, they'll reach out to concierge you through the process, answer questions. Then it's six months of training. A six month internship uh, is like the is the year of the Year Up portion. Correct. Right. Okay. So. So yeah, those are the fundamentals. I reach out to find more information. Certainly want to, aff uh, to affirm that. I'd encourage folks uh, to do that. Uh, and please, to, to Anita's point, share with folks you think that might be interested, other community-based organizations, young people in your life. Uh, you know, any, any opportunity for someone to take uh, a step in a positive direction in their life is something I think we should be encouraging uh, in this season. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, or stay tuned for additional conversations and broadcasts like this where We'll try to you know, highlight good work that's happening and opportunities uh, for folks. I wanna thank Lisa, Anita, and Savion for their time uh, today and for all of you for taking a look at it. Um, in the, and until our next broadcast, please stay very safe and very well. Take care, everybody. Bye.